Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. One of the biggest features of Anime Studio Pro is the ability to create bones for characters and objects. There are two ways you can rig bones to characters and objects, and I'll go over both of those in this lesson. So for this demonstration, let's click on the Draw Shape tool and grab the star shape. I can adjust my color here really quick. And now I'll draw the star on the canvas. Move it down like this. So now the next thing we need to do in order to create bones for this object is to make a bone layer. If you come over here to your layers panel and click on new layer, you can create a bone layer. And I can name this layer star. Now I'll take the layer that I created the star on, holding my mouse and drag it into the star bone layer. Now by clicking on the star layer, I can come over here to my left toolbar and grab the add bone tool. I'll start with the top spike here, so I'll go right about here to begin with. Click and hold down my left mouse button and draw up. Next, I'll draw a bone for the right spike or point. Now from here, you're going to want to have your first bone selected when you draw out the remaining bones. We want all of our bones to link to this first bone. This creates a hierarchy of bones and allows one bone to control the other. If your hierarchy is messed up when creating a character or object with bones, the results won't turn out very well. So in order to select this bone, we'll need to use the Select Bone tool, or you can hit the Up key on your keyboard. Now we'll draw this spike down here. Hit the up key, draw the next bone. Hit the up key, draw the last bone. Now, if I grab my Manipulate Bones tool, you'll notice I have clouds surrounding each bone. This is the area of influence for all of your bones. That means that your bone will influence what's ever in this cloud. So if I take the Manipulate Bones tool, you can see that I can manipulate this object. If I come back here to the Bone Strength tool, I can lower the strength of these, and as I do that, you can see that it affects how the object is being manipulated by the bone. Finally, if you wish to animate this out, I can grab my Manipulate Bones tool here, and advance forward on the timeline and now move my bones. You can see I created some keyframes on my timeline and now if I page back you can see an animation play out. Now let's move on to the method where we bind our layers to our bones. You can see now on my screen I have made a character that is made up of a bunch of different layers in my layers panel. Like before, we're going to need to create a bone layer. So go to your layers panel and click new layer and choose bone. Now we'll name this one character. And from here I need to grab all of these layers and put them into the character bone layer. So to do this, I'll click on the top layer, go all the way down, hold in my shift key on my keyboard, and click the bottom layer. Now, I can drag all of these layers into the bone layer. You'll know if you did this correctly if you can hit the arrow here to hide or display your layers. So now that we have a bone layer, we can go in and add some bones for our character. 
So with the bone layer selected, grab your add bone tool and we'll come down here and we'll add a bone for the pelvis. Now we'll add a bone for the torso. So starting right here, we'll click and drag upwards like this. Make sure that when you create these bones, the thick part for the first bone is on top while the thick part for the second bone is on the bottom. So now we can create a bone for the neck. And finally for the head. You'll notice as I was doing this, the bone before the one I created was highlighted. So we have a hierarchy of each bone being connected eventually to the pelvis bone. Next, we need to create the arm bones. So I'll take my select bone tool and select the torso bone. And now take my add bone tool and come in here and click and drag to create a bone for the arm and the same for the second bone. And I'll do so again for the hand. For the second arm, I will use my select bone tool and select that torso bone once again. Take the add bone tool and draw bones for the arms. Now we need bones for the legs and feet. So I'll scroll down here. Now we don't want our legs to be connected to our torso because that wouldn't make much sense. They would be bypassing the pelvis bone. It makes more sense for the legs to be connected to the pelvis. So we'll take the select bone tool, select the pelvis bone, grab the add bone tool, and starting right here, we'll draw it down, do another, go like this for the feet, We'll do the same now for the last leg. Okay, now the difference here is we won't be relying on the bone strings to control our character. We'll be using what's called layer binding. So now we need to go through each layer and bind it to a certain bone. So starting with the head, we'll click on the head layer, take our bind layer tool, and bind that to the head bone. Next, we'll need to bind our neck. So we'll go to the neck lines layer and click on the neck bone. The neck itself will also be connected to the neck bone. Now we're moving down to the torso. So we'll connect the pieces that are available for the torso. And now we have the sleeve right here, which will be connected to this bone. The left hand connected to that bone. We have the arm, this arm connected to that bone. The torso will of course be connected to this bone. We have a boot right here, so we'll connect it to the foot bone. The knee can go with this bone leg with that bone, that leg with that bone. Right hand, arm, arm, second boot, second knee, leg part and leg part. So now all of our layers have been bound to the corresponding bones. Next, if we take the Manipulate Bones tool, you can see that we have a bunch of clouds surrounding the bones. Now, this isn't a big deal since every single layer is now bound to a bone. Nothing can be affected by the clouds in this bone layer. However, if it does bug you to have these visible, you can go over here to your bone layer, select the Bone Strength tool, and if you click and hold on each of these bones and go to the left, you can reduce the strength of all the bones.
Now taking the manipulate bones tool, we can try this out. We move our hand, we can see how this goes. Same with this one. We have our legs and we have the head. Now everything seems to work good for the most part. My arms, I don't believe I bound my patch layers. So if I go back here to my layers, you can see I have patch layers here. I can take the bind layer tool and just attach them to their arms. Next, you'll notice that when we were animating out our legs, that the feet were becoming disconnected from the body. We can fix this by restraining the bones. So if we come over here to our bone layer and click on it, take the select bone tool and select one of the feet, come up here to bone constraints, enable, a enable angle constraints, and I'll reduce how far these can move to negative five and five. And now I'll do the same for this foot. You'll notice that the angle is greatly reduced. You can see it right here. Finally, I can do the same for the hands. So now when we move these objects, we don't have the feet getting away from us and the wrists don't look as wacky either. And that covers the basics of bone rigging in Anime Studio Pro. You can take the bone tool much further than this by controlling many aspects of your characters and objects. I'm sure as you'll play around with it, you'll start to see some amazing results. Anyway, if you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime dot smithmicro dot com. Thanks for watching guys. I have many more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there covering a wide variety of subjects, so check those out and I'll see you next time.